<laughs> well, I just, I just said, are you introducing me? She's like, nah, you go ahead. You just, <laughs> you just go ahead and get started. So good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Jeanette Shaliga. I'm one of the board members here for Niagara County Genealogical Society. Um, and today I will be going a little bit of an overview of kind of three websites. We kind of called this best of the web. Um, certainly there's many more genealogy websites that are awesome, but these are the three we wanted to concentrate on today. Um, so we're gonna go over Ancestry, Find a Grave, and American Ancestors. So we'll start with Ancestry. Out of curiosity, how many people currently subscribe to Ancestry at home? Okay, um, how many people have subscribed but then dropped it? Okay, yep, I've done that. <laughs> and then are there people that are, that are new to Ancestry, like you're not familiar with it um, a little bit? So we have a little bit of everybody um, <laughs> here. So <clears throat> I hope that you can see the screen okay. Ancestry has kind of three levels of, um, of membership that you can do. Um, these are in six-month increments. Um, if you want just the U.S. records, um, it's going to be $99 for six months or essentially $200 a year. Um, if you want to add, um, go up to the next level, which is the world subscription, that's going to have all of your U.S. records, but then also incorporate um, worldwide records, so out of country, you know, type, type of thing. That's $149 for six months, so that's $300 a year. And then the all access pass <laughs> on the right here, um, which is 199 for six months, so essentially $400 a year. It includes your US and world subscriptions, but then has some additional things. Um, Ancestry has purchased some other companies um, and built their own kind of thing. And um, so one of the companies that, uh, websites that they've started is called newspapers.com. Um, we'll talk about that in a second. Um, they also own Fold3, which is a military website. Um, and then they um, started last April, so I think it's just about a year now, um, what's called Ancestry Academy, where they're doing these high-quality videos. We'll talk about that, too. And then, apparently, you can enjoy premium support with a dedicated 800 number <laughs> if you want to upgrade to that. Um, so let's look at uh, newspapers.com. Now, notice it says newspapers.com basic subscription. So newspapers.com has 143 plus million pages total for the whole thing. Um, the basic, basic subscription has 94 million pages, and if you weren't an Ancestry subscriber and you wanted to do it, that would be $79.95 a year. Um, their pre, um, publisher extra subscription includes the additional 49 million pages, and that's $139.90 a year. So if you're an Ancestry All Access member, um, you would get the basic subscription of the newspapers, which is the 94 million pages. <clears throat> Fold3, their military uh, website, has 480 million historical images. Um, alone, if you were an Ancestry subscriber, that would be $79.95 a year. And then, um, just so you know, they do have like a free membership but you can only look at their free records and you can do memorial pages um, if you want for veterans, but you can't actually delve into, you know, basically the 480, you know, but I just wanted to kind of bring that up. <clears throat> so their Ancestry Academy, which comes with that all access pass, um, if you're on Ancestry and across the top, there's some different tabs. If you go to the one that's on the right called Extras, that's where you would find Ancestry Academy. And they keep adding new videos all the time. <clears throat> now, just if you aren't an all-access pass person, you can still watch some of their high-quality videos. Um, any ones that say premium, you won't be able to get into. But if it doesn't have that premium badge, you will be able to look at. The ones that are free to us, like, if, you know, um, are the ones that are essentially describing and um, selling their products. So there's one that's on Ancestor DNA. It's fantastic. I mean, like, the slides that they incorporate, it's clear and concise. They break it down into chapters so that if you, like, oh my gosh, that was a lot of information, I need to rewatch that again. 
you can just rewatch that, that five minutes that you were. And at the end, there's even a quiz to see how much of the information that you <laughs> um, actually gleaned from it. Um, so there's, you can see, you know, some of the ones that they've got across the top. You know, there's a 41 minute, 41 minute one on <laughs> um, their Ancestry app. Um, you know, finding military veterans on Fold 3, there's a 40 minute one there that you can watch for free with your basic subscription. <clears throat> Speaking of videos, Ancestry has a very large <coughs> YouTube channel. Um, hundreds of videos that they've put out over the past couple of years. And again, pretty high quality. Some of it's commercials, you know, but a lot of it, you know, there's Krista Cowan, she does monthly um, what's new on Ancestry? You know, going over what new records they added to their collections, or how to best search this, or how to find women in your tree. Now, it's all in the product, but this is free. So you can subscribe to their YouTube channel. And what I was saying about a little bit, you can see some of it, you know, genealogy, methodology, search, then research. That's a half hour. There's interviews with people. Um, you know, at the very first one that's starring our new Ancestry TV commercial. So it's a mix of things. But again, you know, you're, well, this is what I do. I don't know about you guys. Uh, when I'm washing my dishes, I'll open the cupboard above my sink. Okay, so I'm not alone. I put my iPad um, in front of my plate. And then so I'm watching the video while I'm doing my chores. And so, you know, you just, you've got 20 minutes here, half hour there. You know, you just watch a little bit, and you just pick up these little things about how better to use their website. And I just think it's, you know, I think they do a great job with that. <clears throat> Getting into the website a little bit. Some of you are new. Some of you subscribe, so you're familiar with this. Um, one little tidbit that I really like is on your home screen. Um, customize your <coughs> home page. If you, you know, when you go to Ancestry, and the first thing that's at the top is search or something that you don't want, you can click that settings thing and then drag the pieces around your home page to set it up to be the order in which you like things. So, you know, you can take a look at that. If you're not familiar, this is what your tree would look like. Um, this is the, you know, just the basic pedigree um, view. You would be able to click on any of the names to go to that person's page. You can see I've got some shaky leaves. Those little green things are clues that they have found. If you don't like this view, on the left you can switch it. Clues who was found. Um, okay, so I, I thought, I'm sorry, I thought that was more common. So the green leaves are, I have put in this person's name at least, and maybe some dates. Mm -hmm. Ancestry would say, hey, we think we might have found a record of your person that might match. So those are called hints. So when you see a leaf there, it's a hint. And I'm going to show you a little bit more about that um, when we get into it, because not all hints are your person. <laughs> Don't accept all of them. <laughs> so here's the other view. You might like working this way. It's a little bit more horizontal, showing siblings and things like that. As I said, when you click into a person, um, it normally defaults to the facts tab, but I wanted to kind of work left to right. So this is the life story view of my ancestor, Josiah Harding. Now, the life story view takes the stuff that I've added into him, but then also adds historical references. So in this case, and it's a small dot in the uh, upper left, but it says November of 1833 when my ancestor was 19 years old. Um, the the night the stars fell, and it says he was living in Tioga, Pennsylvania, where they may have witnessed one of the most spectacular meteor showers in history on the night the stars fell. So you might find that interesting about kind of things that might have happened in your ancestor's life. Or if you don't like it, you can hit ignore <laughs> and take that off of the, the timeline. How did you get into this? This... Yeah. Life story. See, yeah. life story, facts, okay. gallery, hints. Um, it defaults to facts. Just okay. click on life story. Yes. Where does Ancestry get these names? The, of the, 
Well, Josiah is my ancestor. Okay. So was that already there and you found him or did you this add This is it? my, I added him to my tree. This is an ancestor that I've worked on and put in my family tree because I'm a subscriber. Okay. And then other people that use Ancestry, can they access what you did? It, that's a great question. Um, you have some options. You can keep your tree public, as I have, because I'm interested in connecting with other people. Or you can make your tree private, meaning it's my tree and I'm the only one that's working on it. And if your tree's private, though, but say I connected with Shelly, because we're cousins, you know, I can send her a link and allow her to view my private tree. Okay, so it, it, it's however much you want it to be, you can have it. So conceivably, somebody could, if somebody else had entered the name, mm -hmm. click on the name of an ancestor and see all this information that somebody else already put there. Yes, mm -hmm. and, and it's, that's kind of a benefit. Um, if you're a beginner, um, well, and to be cautious, <laughs> beginners tend to get on ancestry sometimes like, Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, and starts adding, uh, borrowing from other people's trees, and all of a sudden they're back to 1400s. <laughs> but what if the second person they clicked on wasn't actually their ancestor, and then they've flown off in a direction that doesn't belong to them? Okay? But, so be cautious when you start. But for those people that I want to connect with people, I leave my tree open. One, to help other people out because I. I feel good about the quality of research that I've put into it. I source a lot of the things that I've added, meaning that I have something to back up why I've put that in my tree. Um, and so it can help beginners, but also it'll connect me with cousins. And people can send me a message saying, hey, I just saw your tree on here, you know, can we collaborate on things? That's how, see the picture of Josiah? That, I, that wasn't my picture. That was a cousin that I met through Ancestry and that is his Civil War picture that he had inherited, you know, and he didn't even have it on his tree. Like, I'm like, can I please put this on my tree? He's like, sure. I'm like, <laughs> you know, like, um, so it's a great, I like keeping my public to make those connections. What about different spellings of the same name? Um, <laughs> yeah. okay. I might have clipped, I apologize, I wasn't expecting that question, broader than this, because I tried to make things as big as I could for you guys to see in the, in the back. Up in the right, there's going to be tools and edit, and you can change. Now, what if, and that is how Josiah spelled his name, but he was also known as Uncle Cy to people, and so he might be found in newspaper articles or something under the name just Cy Harding or something. You can add alternate names and you can put what's your preferred one. And so if there's various spellings of a surname, then you can have that in. And then so when Ancestry goes and searches for him the next time, they'll search with both, both of the alternate names that you put in, the aliases. So here's the facts page. This is the one that's defaulted to when you, when you, you know, click on the person's name. Um, so on the left are all the facts. Now these are things that I've added. Um, you know, his birth date, residence um, in 1820, that's the federal census. Residence in 1830, another federal census. Now the next one, it says birth of son, George Simeon Harding. It knows that because I've added the son to the tree. Okay, I said he had a child, this was the date he had the child. But it's not really, it's nice to know, but it's not necessarily one of the records. You know, it's just kind of like, you know, an important fact in, in the story. I'm going to kind of jump to the next slide. If you don't want those extras in your, in your storyline here, if you go under show family events and uncheck it, it won't show the death of your sister, you know, the, the death of your mother, the birth of your child. It'll take those out and just leave the records that you've connected. Just something. And what's that under? It's, see where it says show? Mm -hmm. Drop it down and then family events, uncheck it. Okay. Okay. So 
Also on this page are the sources. If I was to click on residents, now it only has, well let's go to birth. See how it's, it's, it's very small, I apologize. It says seven sources. These magical lines would that connect to all the seven sources that I've used to put his birth date in, that I've backed up my research. If you're a beginner and you're starting to collect information from other people's trees, be careful if they don't have <coughs> their information first. If you start seeing that they just put this stuff on there, you know, without any information connected to it, maybe go, okay, I'll, I'll, set the, I'll keep it in mind, but I'm going to wait until I have some facts to back it up before I really commit to adding your information to my tree. Um, then on the right is the family, and these are all hyperlinks, so I could then click on his father, his mother, there's a siblings drop down that would open up if I wanted to see his siblings, and then his spouse and children. So this is the facts view of your ancestor. The next one over is the gallery. Now these are all the things, images, that I've added to um, my ancestor. So basically, because he was born, you know, 1814 to 1894, all the only pictures I have are his headstone and the one of, from the Civil War. And um, the rest are all newspaper articles and some maps um, that I got from the library, um, and then images of the census that I connected. And the last tab is a little bit about what we talked about were the hints. Um, so there was one shaky leaf connected to Josiah waiting for me to answer it. Now, my Josiah was 1814 to 1894, and I, I know that because I've had a lot of res resources confirm that. Ancestry went, well, we found a Josiah Harding that has the same birth and death. His middle name is John, um, and he was born, it says the, the record collection is England, select deaths and burials, um, and the range is 1538 to 1991. Now, my Josiah, he was born in Vermont and died in PA. There's no way he was the England Josiah Harding that they were referencing. And so Ancestry's just saying, hey, here's a hint. Check it over. <laughs> you know, so if I was to hit review, that would open up that collection and I could look at the document, whether it's a transcription or an image that they have found. Um, or I'm going to hit ignore when I get home because that's not my guy. And you can tell that you can, you know, um, I've ignored three and accepted six over the course of my research on Josiah. So they're helpful hints. <coughs> they can connect you to other people's trees, you know, that are also researching, um, you know, the same family, things like that. When you're searching on Ancestry, I'm already falling behind, so if I go too fast, just stop me a little bit. Um, the basic search is just the top two lines. First, last, place they might have lived in a birth year. And then where it says search, it said show more options. I've opened that up so that you can kind of see the entire search menu. Um, sometimes when beginners get in here, they start adding everything. You know, first and middle name, sure, I know that. And the last name and where they lived and stuff. Sometimes less is more. <laughs> um, if you give too much of a detailed account, if I put the first and middle name and last name and the birth date, because that's exactly when it happened, but the record doesn't have all of that information, I might not get it back. So sometimes start simply. Just the first and last name and where they lived. Then start to narrow down, you know, you receive 30,000 hits. Okay, let's, let's pare it down and pare it down, pare it down. So start broader and then narrow in. Um, you know, you can add a family member. You know, I only want results of Josiah Harding with his spouse, you know, like with her name attached to it and other things like that. There are some advanced um, techniques. Um, I find, though, that Ancestry and Family Search and all of that, they are really good about, if you're searching for somebody whose name's Matthew, 
and you put in Matt, they're going to give you results for Matt and Matthew. You know, it's a, it's a pretty smart company as far as their searching techniques. But say you're just having a really hard time finding your ancestor and everything like that. It could just really be that even as smart as they are, they can't figure out, you know, they can't match the record that you're trying to find. Um, there's certain, and you can, you know, kind of Google this. Um, there's certain things where if you add a question mark, um, the example that they put here, um, well, let's, okay, so they do the uh, asterisk first. So if you did Fran asterisk, um, it would show up all the results for Fran, Frank, Franny, Franny, Frankie, <coughs> like anything past that. If you do a question, or they did the asterisk again, Smith, because it might be on a record S-M-Y-T-H or S-M-I-T-H. If you do a, you know, a, a asterisk or a question mark, you know, it'll bring back both results like that. That's more of an advanced thing. I didn't know where you guys were. Um, <laughs> you can, um, I found this and the, the next page, they give some more examples. I just did a Google search for wild card search on Ancestry and it brought me to that page. So that's called wild card searching. So if you're interested in getting through that, also, if you know Lou O'Mell, he's excellent at this type of stuff. So if you need to bend his ear about searching with wild cards, he's the one to ask. <coughs> so we searching for a person is one way to do it. Once you kind of get into things, though, you might be looking, you know, I've got this ancestor, and I, I can find them on the 1900 census, the 1910 census, the 1930 census, and 40, but I can't find them in 1920. And so if you're just doing a search for their name, you're kind of getting all these hits. Um, so maybe you just want to search in the 1930 census. Did I say that or 20? What was the one I missed? 20, 20 census. <laughs> Um, so what's often recommended um, with the videos that I watch while doing my dishes um, is by using the card catalog. Um, this apparently is one of the most underutilized parts of Ancestry. So when you're in the upper left there of your screen, if you go to search, you look down, there's card catalog. So this is what the card catalog looks like. And I just have the U.S. subscription. I'm not currently a world subscriber. Um, there's, it says showing results of 1 to 25 out of 32,547 collections. Okay, they have 32,000 collections of just US, U.S. records. Out of curiosity, how many people have found something on Family Search that they were like excited about? Have you ever found anything on Family Search? Family Search, 277, and that's world, or 2,077, that's worldwide, compared to the 32,000 on Ancestry. And, and I think Family Search is awesome. Like, it's just kind of showing how much that these websites have, how much Ancestry has. So, Does with. Include private, private, uh, privately held. I don't think so. I think it's just their own records. Collections. Their own yeah. records. Yeah. It's their collections. Now, it could be, you know, a yearbook is one collection. I don't know. You know, like, but just the number. It's like, wow. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Um, when you're searching the card catalog, a couple techniques that I do um, is, you know, over at the title and keywords, um, I'll search for a place. Because oftentimes where your ancestry lived, or your ancestor lived, that's where the documents are. So, you know, I kind of did a search for Niagara. Um, kind of because thinking about tonight, you know, Niagara County, and it brought up that they've got 47, you know, kind of results of things about Niagara. <coughs> you know, some, let's see. Did you put in Niagara County? No, I just put Niagara. Niagara. So you can get some, like, Ontario <laughs> things, too. In fact, if you look, it says filter by location. There's 16 results for Canada, 38 for U.S., 47 for North America. There's two military, 45 stories, memories, and histories, six schools, directories, or church histories, and eight reference dictionaries and almanacs. I then found. You click on one of those. You can click in a collection mm -hmm. and then just search that book. So instead of going upstairs and taking a book off the shelf, it could be there. 
In fact, yeah, the what second... What is that? What? That Landmarks of Niagara County is upstairs. It's upstairs. <laughs> the second thing I like to do when I'm searching the card catalog is searching for a surname. Um, and so there's our Harding family, the um, Samuel Harding, um, that was Josiah's dad. There's an entire book that is done on my family, a, you know, a genealogy book. And that's all, you know, digitized right up there. You know, Aunt Ida's copy is at Aunt Linda's, and if I ask nicely, I'm allowed to see it, but I can't take it home. But it's digitized right there. <laughs> I can look at it anytime I want, save the pages, print them off, you know, things like that. So you can find various, you know, family histories already done in your family by searching right in the card catalog. Okay. Ancestry also has DNA. Um, has anybody done Ancestry DNA? Okay. Barbara, Barbara, Barbara. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and we're not related. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, they're incorporating, um, you know, they've done DNA for a little bit while, but for a little while, but now they're starting to, I don't want to say be smart about it, but incorporate the, the paper trees that people have created on the website with DNA, and they're mixing it together. Now, um, oh, well, so anyways, this, I got my DNA done, and it kind of says, you know, kind of the breakdown of the regions of where I'm at, people that I uh, DNA matched to, and then at the bottom, and apparently I cut this off and I apologize, see how it says DNA circles beta? Right underneath that line it says, you're not in any DNA circles. Because um, I am not lucky enough to have people that have done their DNA um, to connect to yet. Um, and so what Ancestry is doing is, um, you know, they started these new Ancestor discoveries. And um, by taking your DNA, they know that you're related to this person. And they've already got a history done on them. You know, type of thing like that. And you can start to learn about your ancestors that way. Um, you know, you can connect with um, various people that are researching the same tree as you. The DNA circles are, you need at least three people that have done their DNA and have somebody on their tree that matches somebody on your tree. And then they start to say, hey, you're working together. Why don't you connect this way? Things like that, ancestor stories. It's really neat what's happening with it. Um, you know, and you start to connect different ways. Kind of cool. I like it. This is kind of old school, but it's one other one other thing that's on Ancestry. <laughs> I say it's old school. It's because when I first started doing um, my genealogy research, um, message boards was kind of the, the thing to do. Roots Web? You remember Roots Web? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Ancestry bought them, too. Um, <laughs> and so what happened is, is um, if you go under Help to Message Boards, um, you can put a post on, say, hey, I'm looking for people um, with this surname that live in this county. You can just leave the message there. And then two months, six years later, somebody might also come across that same message and say, hey, I'm looking for those people in that county, you know, and connect with you. So just another way, some cousin baiting, putting yourself out there, <laughs> um, you might connect with somebody. <coughs> Fantastic results. Yeah? You like the message boards? Just so you know, Ancestry also has a free app for your smartphone or tablet. Um, so that way, when you're researching on the go, uh, when I started, I, it was like, you know, the bag of all my binders, and it was like, okay, we're going to the library today, you know, like, or the cemetery, and now I, you know, it's all I need is this. And, you know, <laughs> you're, you're there. So um, that's just a nice, you know, thing that they have. Um, to connect to your tree. I think that's my last, oh, no, one more. Okay. Um, with Ancestry, now some of you guys um, said that you're not a subscriber. There's a couple workarounds. One of them is Ancestry said, hey, New York, can we have some of your records? Come on, come on, share them with us. We like your records. And Albany said, sure, but then you have to let everybody in New York look at them for free. And so Ancestry said, okay. So, if, so, if you, um, <laughs> um, so what happens is, and if you, this is the website here, um, but if you just do a Google search for New York State Archives 
in genealogy, ancestry, you're going to find it. And the website looks like this. Um, you know, it's the New York State Archives website, Ancestry.com New York. And if you just kind of scroll down, all it asks is for your zip code. So, no, your, yeah, your zip code. Yeah. Um, so, even if somebody was in PA, I'm not sure how they would know if you just put in a Lockport zip code um, and get in there. But, so that's one way if you want to research some of the records that the New York State Archives have shared with Ancestry for free without having a subscription. Um, and like I said, if you just do a Google search, you'll be able to find, find that. Um, another way to get around it is some of our Nyoga libraries have subscribed to the library edition of Ancestry. Um, our bigger libraries um, are generally ones that can afford it. Niagara Falls, NT, and Lockport have them. I'm not sure. Are there other do have little ones? Yeah. Lewiston, Lewiston has it. Oh, that would make sense. Um, but I know some of the smaller ones have had it and then gotten rid of it, depending on you know, their patronage, um, if they're interested in it. Now, the library edition has access to the records, just the U.S. records, um, but you can't build a tree on it. Okay? So you can, you can do research, but you can't get the shaky leaves and you can't start adding your ancestors and connecting records, you know, but you can look at the records. So that's, that's another way to, to go. <coughs> Anybody have questions on ancestry? <coughs> you build a tree on it and, and you don't continue your membership. The tree stays there and then when you come back, it's, it's right there. So you can, always, you can look at your tree if you don't have a membership. If you put a tree on Ancestry and you give up your membership, you can still look at your tree, but you can't research. You can't change anything. You can't, yeah. And I don't yeah. think you can get to your messages either. Can you print it? I don't know. I don't know. Try to <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. That's a good question. Any other questions on Ancestry? All right. Jeanette, you might want to tell your story that when you're talking to your did your stepdad about golf? Oh yes, um, he uh, he kind of scoffed a little bit about when I I was getting the world subscription then. So it was you know 150 for six months. It was 300 dollars for the year, and he's like, you know, they call me Nutty, and he's like, geez, Nutty, that's a lot of money. You know, kind of like, what are you doing spending all that money? And I go, really? How much do you spend in golf in a month? <laughs> and he went, fair point, and he never brought it up again. <laughs> you know, because it's your hobby. And, and when you, you know, get the U.S. or the world subscription, $300 a year, um, it's essentially less than a dollar a day. And if, you know, if you're spending a couple minutes here or there, what would you do for a dollar? You know, like kind of, yes, you have to pay for it in a, in a chunk, you know, and sometimes... You step away from it, and then you come back, you know, and then you're doing research for till 2 in the morning. You're like, I need to go to bed, I work tomorrow, you know, but you're just adding records, you know. And so it's kind of, you know, it's it's how you want to do it. Some people, they subscribe for a little bit, and then, you know, when it comes summer and they're out in their gardens and things like that, they let it go and then come back, you know, like, and it's right there. And then when you come back, they've added a whole bunch of new records, you can start your addiction again, you know. <laughs> you should have a patch or I don't know. Like, <laughs> All right, moving on to the second website of the night, which is findagrave.com. Um, out of curiosity of uh, Findagrave users, have you been on that? Okay, it's equal, but some people that are new to it too. Um, I believe, and I didn't double check, but um, I believe this website started just um, for famous people. It was, you know, if you were curious to look at Elvis's headstone, um, that, you know, you would go there and things like that. But then people kept wanting to say, but I want to add a picture of my grandpa and stuff like that. And it kind of blossomed from there. Um, so when you go to the Find a Grave website, which, by the way, is a free website, the left side is the famous people. We like the right side. <laughs> this, is, this is our side. Um, and currently, I took this snapshot, I think, yesterday. Um, they have 143 million grave records on this website. It is just out a wonderful website. The two favorite areas that you're going to want are over here where you can search the 143 million grave records or if you specifically want to search in a cemetery that's right underneath it. When you click on either one of those it brings up these two search forms. The one on the left is if you're searching for a person. Again, 
start, don't put in every single thing you know about the person. Maybe just kind of start with their name, and that's my favorite thing to do. I'll put their first and last name, or sometimes I'll just even put their last name because I want kind of a broader result. And then I pick under the cemetery and uh, country list, USA, and then state list, New York, and then oftentimes I have a good idea of where I think they were buried. So I pick like Niagara County or Erie County, just kind of see what happens, you know. Um, don't narrow down too much on that. And then cemetery search, sometimes, you know, you just want to see a specific cemetery because you know one person was buried there. Maybe more family members are buried in there. And we'll show you a little bit about that. So if I did a search for a person, I did a search for Anson Preston. Um, it came back that there were seven Anson Prestons in the 143 million records. Um, just so you know, the, see how there's one that's bolded, the second one up from the bottom? That one's bolded because I was signed in. That's the memorial I added. Okay, so it's saying, hey, this one's yours because you added that one. <laughs> that's why it's bolded. Um, you're going to notice after the people's names that there's some um, images. This is kind of things that will show. Flowers. You can leave digital flowers to a grave. So you can, here's a picture of flowers. And <coughs> Not to interrupt you, but yeah. you might want to be sure to do that because then cousins can find that flower, see who left it, and contact you. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, that happened to my uncle. Um, not to get too off the story, but he found out that he has some half-siblings he didn't know about. And um, one of his half-siblings had died in Vietnam, and there was um, flowers left for his brother by the nurse that was with him when he died in the hospital. Mm -hmm. And she had left a little story about what she remembered about him passing. And he was able to contact with her and kind of get that detail. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so if we find a great-great-grandfather or something, and there's a tombstone, if we add a flower to it, then someone can contact me? That's it'll just say, it'll show the image of the flower mm -hmm. and just your username. Yeah. And you can put a message, no. rest in peace, you know. But that you have to pay for, don't you? No. 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 Oh, okay. Um, it's just a... a it, it might do some good cousin beating, but it's, it's a little bit of a novelty. You know, just so kind of, yeah. Um, you don't have to leave flower, digital flowers for people. Um, <laughs> the star would be if they're famous. A heart is if they're sponsored. Um, and then the Mona Lisa is if there's a photo of the person. And by the way, they also say no, how do I put, um, no funeral photos? Is that like casket photo? They don't want that on there. Um, and then... Um, the RAP, the headstone, that's the one that a lot of times we're looking for because, you know, if there's a picture of the actual headstone, it might have the person's years on it, a woman's maiden name, you know, an indication of the relationship if more people are on the stone or not. Um, so if I go into, if I clicked on Anson, now this is the one that I made. This is my Anson. Um, this is kind of his memorial card. So when they said that they had 143 million records, this is one of them. This is what they're talking about. And so what they have on here, you know, there's some different tabs. Um, you know, his name up at the top, his birth and death. Now, that's just the year because that's what's on the picture of the headstone. Do I actually have the rest of his birth and death? Sure. And I could add that if I wanted, but I, I don't know, was lazy that day or something. Uh, so I didn't. You can add a bio if you want. We'll talk about family members a little bit. Um, burial, that he's in Acacia. Um, and then the next thing I wanted to kind of point out, um, GPS location. Now, Acacia, what, 10,000 people buried. If I went, oh, can you go take a picture? The person would be like, are you kidding me? Like, <laughs> I'm like where do I find this? Um, find a Grave has an app that I'll show you in a little bit. Um, so if you have a smartphone with GPS capability and you stand in front of the thing and you take the picture, it will put a pin drop. So here's an aerial view of where Anson is buried. And then you can even switch. This is a Google map. You can switch it to satellite. And I, I didn't zoom in that much, but you can zoom in pretty close that you can actually kind of sort of count how many rows 
you know, because you can kind of see where the markers are. If, well, if your ancestor's under a tree, good luck. Um, <laughs> you, know, but, uh, you know, so that would at least give you, I mean, that whole thing's acacia. You can kind of, you know, narrow down where your family member is. So incorporating GPS with, with cemeteries is, is an amazing thing. Yes? If you know the uh, county and the state, but you don't know the cemetery, mm -hmm. can you find somebody then? Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. Your results might be bigger. You know, because there might be more people called that name, you know, but absolutely, you don't have to narrow it down to the county. You can just search for a person's name. I, I'm fine to grade? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, here, I'll go back a little bit. So, right here, you could just put a person's name. The only thing that's required is last name. You'll get, you know, thousands of results, you know, but you don't have to put... You know, years. You don't uh -huh. have to put where. Yeah. The one caution: there are some people who are mean what very they mean well. They work from obituaries, or, or and they enter them without being at the cemetery. Don't have a picture, but they just enter names. And for example, there's two Bear Ridge cemeteries in Pendleton. Mm -hmm. And some of them put them in the wrong place. Oh. But that's before the GPS. Mm -hmm. Well, and you'll find that too. You could find um, like a, a memorial card like this that doesn't have a picture of the gravestone. You might be like, well, how does the person know that Anson Preston's buried in Keisha? Sometimes when I'm volunteering upstairs, I've taken the, <laughs> the Glenwood Cemetery book and I've entered in names. Because if somebody's searching for a name and they have no idea where they're buried, they might come across it. And then I've only got the dates that are in the book. They might be wrong, but at least it's a start, you know, and it kind of can give a clue of a person of where they are. And then you can always request a photo. We'll talk about that in a minute. Does this include all cemeteries? Like okay, so it's, it's a volunteer website. So... But they've been around a little while. I I would say you'd be kind of hard pressed to find a cemetery that doesn't exist on there. Um, but that doesn't mean that they're all that all the people that are buried are in there. Say that you're a volunteer and you're taking pictures and entering in, but there's somebody a, a baby that doesn't have a headstone. You're gonna walk right over that grave and not know that it was there. You know, so it's up to people that are doing the research and adding, you know, a memorial for the baby because they know the baby's there because they've gone into the cemetery office and have gotten the records. What, what about cemeteries that, like, there's been, what, two or three in the last decade in Buffalo have gone broke? And, they're there. <laughs> and, they're um, probably in there. Are they probably in there? Yeah. I found two real pokey little ones out in Niagara County, and I thought, <coughs> oh, boy. And I took a whole bunch of pictures, and I thought, wait till I get home. I'm going to put this on Find a Grave. It's already there. <laughs> All those markers were already there. You, you there can find I, I haven't found one yet that's there not there. There's people there. Yeah. There's, there's one up towards Barker. There's some down towards Rochester. Well, there's and then, eight or ten grades so here's, your, here's the thing. If you look and it's not there, then go out and put it on there. <laughs> some of the people, like the really <laughs> big cemeteries, like Acacia and Whitechapel and uh, the big one in Lockport, a lot of those people aren't there. But the cemetery is definitely there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you can go and take pictures. <coughs> the thing about this, so it's a free website. It's, it's all, what's on there is what we've contributed. And the great thing about it, I was going to talk about this later, but so I live, I live here in Niagara County, but I have an ancestor that's buried in California. <coughs> and and I, um, I would like a picture of that headstone because maybe the husband's buried or, you know, whatever. You can hit request a photo, and a volunteer that lives near <coughs> that cemetery in California, when they get around to it, will come by and, and take that picture for you. You know, and then, and then you know, in, in turn, or in kind, we should be doing the same for those people that live far away from here. You know, and things like that. Excuse me, do you have to go in then and check to see if they did it, or do you get a message? That we'll talk about it. Yeah, oh. well, yes. I was just going to say, I went on to find a grave on, for the family name of Hess, and down below it said, maintained by R.L. Hess. I didn't put this information in. It was one that I found. Mm -hmm. 
We will, I will talk about that too. But I clicked on him, it? and he's in Kansas. Mm -hmm. And then I corresponded. We found out we were related. And then he sent the whole family history that I wouldn't even know where to look. Isn't that great? So that's mm -hmm. another way of finding more. In fact, I found a couple cousins like that. That is Just awesome. Just going by on maintained by. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and I'll show everyone where that is too. Yes. I have a question. Um, I'm very new to all of this, and I, my husband passed away seven years ago. So I, in doing my family tree, I googled his name. Find a grave comes mm -hmm. up. There's a picture of his headstone. Mm -hmm. Of course, my name is on it. It was kind of creepy at first when I saw it. <laughs> How did they get there? So are there volunteers then? That just, now, he's at Coles Bar Park Cemetery. So. Barbara and I would be like, all right, let's grab breakfast and do a couple rows. And you oh, go to the cemetery and you take picture, take picture, take okay. picture. And, and you know, and, and it's, it's not done... We're doing it to try to help others that might, you know, be well, it's wonderful. I mean, yeah. once I realized yeah. that, it was. <laughs> Whoa, I it was. Yeah, and um, I'm just talking about find a grave. There's another website called billiongraves.com um, that also is a GPS, you know, type of thing. They're, they're nowhere near the amount of records that um, find a grave has. What kind of happened was find a grave did not have an app. But they had like 100 million records. So Billy and Graves went, well, we're going to come up with this cool app with GPS. Well, Ancestry bought Find a Grave, and now Find a Grave has an app with GPS. <laughs> and so, you know, the, the two going against each other. But, you know, you might find somebody on Billy and Graves, too. So that's another website to... Is there anything from Summit Street Cemetery on there, do you know? I'm sure. I, yeah, I, I don't. I don't. I mean, I don't know how much is left out there, but yeah, you you'll have to look when you get home. I will. <laughs> so, um, this is the up in the left here is the Acacia Park kind of main page. If I was to search for a cemetery and I look for Acacia, um, so right now, view all interments. They they have four thousand six hundred ninety two listed. There's ten thousand people buried there. But we've only added 4,692 memorial pages yet, okay? Um, they think of the 4,600, 53% has been photographed, approximate. Yes? Is that what it meant by, on, on the uh, icons, uh, sponsored? Oh, um, I, you know, I don't know what <coughs> sponsored, I think you can... Because it's a free site, so I think that's one of the ways they get some money. Yeah, yeah. you can pay to sponsor your you can pay ancestor, to sponsor, and then there won't be any ads on the page. It, there won't be any advertisement. It'll just be your page. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> you don't want to sponsor your ancestors. <laughs> Grandpa doesn't need the ad for Geico. <laughs> Anywho, so um, right now, Acacia has 212 photo requests. So people that don't live near the area, they would love it if you could please take a picture for them. Um, and then, so say you wanted to just search within the cemetery. So you know you have one ancestor buried there. Maybe there's more. You know, you can do a search for last name. I did a search for Whitaker, and um, there was four results. Okay, so right there. Um, so if I was to click in to one of them, I clicked into Charles, you can connect family members by linking to their memorial page. So it, you know, I connected Ella as his spouse, but I could also add his children. And so sometimes that has opened family trees up for me because somebody has done, you know, that type of stuff. People, you know, you can add bio. People have typed up obituaries and added that in there type of thing. Now, we're talking a little bit about, well, who made this page? So, created by Jay Shaliga. That's me. I made this page. I'm the only one that can edit it. Here's a frustration. <laughs> so and so, you know, this could be your grandpa. And I could have, even though the dates might have said he died in 1933, when I was typing late at night, I might have put 1943 by accident. And so you can send me a message, say, hey, Charles is my grandpa, you've got the date wrong, or I've got some more information, would you please update it? And I can ignore you, because that's my right. <laughs> um, or I can fix it. Or I can say, hey, that's your grandpa, I don't know him at all, I was volunteering up here adding in names, 
would you like me to transfer the management of this page to you? And you can edit it all you want. Okay. Or you can add your own. No, you don't want a duplicate. No, I've done that. I've done that. <laughs> well, I've done that. Is. I've done that by mistake. I mean, when I was first, you know, adding my fa my family, in, mm -hmm. I found that someone else had. It doesn't tell you it's a duplicate. It's They're just, getting better about it. Yeah. Because yeah. I know this was a couple of duplicates. Okay, so if if you're the only person that can edit that, what happens if you pass away? That's a good. Didn't you call find a grave about? <clears throat> After. 30 days, if you don't respond, it's in the, the all the rules in the beginning. Mm -hmm. After 30 days, if you don't respond, that person can then contact Find Grave and someone there will take care of it. So, say you want to connect with me because, hey, you, you <coughs> added that. That might be related to you or you might have just been volunteering. I don't know. You know, you want to kind of check in to see. You can have, like, I have a profile. So you click on there. So there's me, um, my profile. That was my high school reunion. Uh, and then, so it kind of shows that I've had, I've added 145 memorials, but I only manage 140 of them. Maybe I've given five away to some people. Um, I've added 156 photos. I fulfilled two photo requests. You know how some people are driven by numbers or something? You know, there's... There's volunteers that <laughs> you'll see that they fulfilled hundreds and thousands of photo requests, you know, because that's that's what they enjoy, you know, and, and collecting that number. Um, or, oh, maybe that means I have two photo requests out and I've taken four volunteer photos. I bet that's it. I bet I said it wrong, but you get the idea. Um, I've placed two virtual flowers. I have two virtual cemeteries. I have three friends. <laughs> Barbara <laughs> Kyle, I think, is one of them. <laughs> I don't know where my other friends are. Um, <laughs> Um, so at the bottom, there's messages. It's considered um, polite that if somebody that lives in California or Arizona takes a picture for you, that you place a message on their profile saying thank you. Because you know, again, that's it's affirmation. It's you know I've I've done something nice. Show me how nice I you know kind of thing like. Um, so you can connect, you know, and this woman, she sent me a message. She goes, hey, I, I was in the cemetery and I got Mary Golwitzer because I requested. Mary Golwitzer. She goes, besides her was a Lula Golwitzer, um, 1875 to 1880, and Effie Golwitzer. Um, are you interested in creating their memorials? Basically, she took the pictures of the people next to the one that I asked and said, do you want to create the memorials so that way it's your page and you can make <coughs> the edits? You know, like, because she could create the page, but then what if I wanted to do more to it? So I wrote back and I'm like, Absolutely, give me 10 seconds, you know, and I created a page for Lulu and a page for Effie and I put request photo, request photo, so she got the credit and then she uploaded the photos that she took to those pages and then, you know, she wrote back, thanks for your quick response, photos have been added, you know, type of thing. Um, the virtual cemeteries, it's, it's a way of, like, Pinteresting. So you might have a whole bunch of, you know, you want to collect this family, but they're all in these different cemeteries. You're like, where, did, where is that person again? You can click when you're in a profile, but add this person to my virtual cemetery. I just need two, one for my dad's side and one for my mom's side. And all it is is a list of people that I've added to this, you know, this collection so I can easily find them later. You can see that they're in different cemeteries you know, and things like that, the different people that I've added. Um, I'm pointing at Michael because there's a Mona Lisa picture, <coughs> meaning that, well, there's a, the R.E.P. gravestone, there's a, there's a headstone picture, but there's something else there. So what it was is, this is, um, this is his page, but I didn't create it. D. Poltzler. <laughs> and, um, and so he must have been in the cemetery, and he took some pictures. You can see he added a spouse and, and children because they were near, and it says father. So he put some of the familiar, familial connections together um, and things like that. Now, I added this down here because I went to the cemetery office, um, and this was um, a copy of the plot, the family plot listing all the people. Um, so it's not a photo of Michael in particular, but it's 
pertinent to this family. So we already talked about request a photo. Okay, we're done with that. So I did add a photo for this person. That's the button I pressed. So it warned me. It said, if you don't own this, um, <laughs> so you can suggest a correction or addition, kind of how we talked about, you know, if you have something wrong, um, you know, you can suggest a relationship, you can suggest things, um, you can add a photo, add flowers, <coughs> things like that, okay? So I clicked on add a photo, did I show you how to, no. I clicked on add a photo and I uploaded it. So that's how I did that. There's that, then, you know, pictures of people too. You know, it doesn't have to be, I did a document. Um, moving on over to kind of to Glenwood, talking a little bit about people that have requested photos that don't live near here. Um, Glenwood has 70 photo requests. Um, when you click in that, here's kind of a list of the beginning of them. Um, the name of the person, and um, when it, they were, these were requested, I mean, look, these have been, and I'm sure they have the oldest ones first, um, 2012 that these people have been waiting for somebody to please take a picture for them. Um, and then, now this one, Sarah Townsend had one problem reported. Now, it could be that I've seen, you know, we're in three feet of snow, I tried to find your ancestor, I couldn't do it, or the stone, I've seen problems reported when the stone has been sunk down so low, it was filled with water, they couldn't see enough to get it, you know, things like that. Um, this one in particular said, um, I went to the cemetery, but the cemetery office has no record of this person, um, you know, and, and kind of explaining what had happened. Now, the person that requested it, when they got that message, they should have said, they should have removed the request then, so that it didn't sit on the list for four years. Um, but they didn't. You know, people don't know necessarily. But, you know, that's to kind of point that out. Um, say you wanted to add a name to a cemetery. Um, at Glenwood, my stepdad's grandpa, Arthur, was buried there, and I, I have the picture, but he didn't have a, a memorial. So, you know, it's my job to help add. It's all of our jobs to help add. Um, so I click on add a name to the cemetery. And this is what comes up. So <coughs> it's a pretty simple form. You know, put the name. Um, if it's a woman, you know the maiden name, put it there. Um, birth, you know, death. Um, a bio, should you choose to? Was this person famous? Um, and if you know the plot information. So what I did is on my computer, I kind of put those side by side, and I filled in the information. And then, um, so there's where I filled in the information. All I knew from the picture was his name and the years. And then I hit proceed to step two, and I have this. Success! You've done it. Um, you can go visit Arthur's page. You can add another uh, name to the same cemetery, meaning maybe you, hit, you took a bunch of pictures and you kind of want to... You know, we'll go off and off, you know, do it, or go to a different cemetery. <coughs> so I wanted to see his page. <laughs> so here's Arthur's page that I added, um, and it's just kind of, you know, basic. It just has his name at the top and the year. So other than that, there's nothing really there. So I wanted to add a photo to this person. Okay, now this is where, when I had added the picture of the, um, the document of the cemetery plot. So what defaults is gray, but if you wanted to drop that down, you could put a per, you know a picture of a person, the family, or other. I had chosen other because it wasn't a picture of a person; it was a document. <laughs> and then choose the file and upload it. Um, you know they give you some guidelines. Only post photos that you've taken for copyright things. You know you can't just take somebody else's pictures and then take the credit for uploading them. They're, they try to, you know, discourage that type of thing. And then once you've done that, you can add a caption if you want, but then just hit the button at the bottom, add this photo and caption, and there you go. There's Arthur's page now. Now he's got the picture there. Now that's just kind of a thumbnail size. When you click on that, it does open a page so that it's bigger. 
or at the top where it says Memorial Photos and Flowers, you can click on Photos and you'll see all the ones that have been added. Transcribe. Um, so people, now that they have the app, or in the cemetery, take picture, take picture, take picture, um, but they might not want it. They want to do the fun photo part, but not actually type the names in. So if you have a couple minutes, um, you can go to this new transcribe area and um, you know photos to transcribe, and it'll pull up a window like this, and it'll show you the picture that it needs transcribed, and then you just type in the information that you read there. And then now they've got the picture. Now that they have the name and the info, the next time somebody goes to search for Ronald Hall, they're going to get a result. But now, you know, before they didn't have it, you know, because it was just a picture and you can't search while they're working on that. But, you know, <laughs> um, you know, we need to type it out. So that's a little bit about transcribing. Um, so I mentioned about their app. Um, the app came out <coughs> last spring or early summer, I want to say. We started playing with it. Um, and it was kind of, I remember it was a little bit awkward because you didn't want to create duplicates like Shelly loves to, apparently. Um, <laughs> you, so when I was standing in front of the stone in the cemetery, <coughs> I first searched to see if that already had a page or not. So that took a little bit of time. Well, they've gotten better. And um, the second paragraph, uh, no. Oh, third one down. Transcribing matches photos to existing memorials, no more duplication. So now they, they're getting smart about it. So I went to Cold Springs on my way home today. And um, so I, this is what my phone looked like. And so I clicked on um, add headstone photos, I think. And it wouldn't let me, well, it showed me this first. I couldn't take a screenshot while I was taking photos, but again, it, it kind of brought up this thing. It says, now you can upload a batch of headstone photos. Um, these will then be available to transcribe um, on your profile page or on the cemetery page. You'll have seven days to transcribe your own work, and then once it's done, then they're going to add it to that website and let other people help out. Um, oh, that's better. And then <coughs> ask the photographer any memorials created by the community through transcribe. Uh, scription will be yours to manage. So these are kind of all mine. So I took a picture of Douglas I. Payne, and then um, I went to um, I took you know eleven photos to transcribe, and it, so it kind of gave me a little bit of direction, and it was pretty easy. It showed me the picture, and I could I could move it up and down, kind of blow it up or whatever at the top, and it just says name, you know, first, middle, last. And that there was some information, so I just put it in, hit save. There was some more underneath it if there was other things like maiden name or other things that you needed to add. Um, and then I hit save, and it was done. Oh, and apparently I'm done with Find a Grave. Any questions about Find a Grave? Crickets, all right. So I'm still running behind. <laughs> So I'm going to kind of go through this one um, a little bit fast. I feel like I've been doing everything fast, and I hope you guys are sticking with me. Um, so AmericanAncestors.com is the website for the New England Historical and Genealogical Society's website. Um, how many people, does anyone subscribe to that? One? You, okay. Do, do, do anyone have New England Ancestors in their tree? Okay, a little, okay. Um, so this website might be beneficial to you. This is a subscription website, but lucky for you, the Niagara County Genealogical Society, we pay for a library subscription. So if you would like to come to our library, we're open Thursday, Friday, Saturday from 1 to 4.45, upstairs <coughs> on the second floor, you can use our computer and search this site without having to purchase your own subscription. Yes? You can use your own computer, too. I did okay. not know that. Because I knew it was something with the um, the IP address, but I wasn't sure. Is it yeah. that word or that? Okay. Ooh, is it dot .org? Or it's dot .org. It's a dot .org. Don't write down the dot .com. Yeah, I just wanted to Sorry. Okay. So, 
Say you don't want to come to our library because you really want to search your New England ancestors at home. Um, if you want to subscribe, it is um, $89.95, I'm assuming, for a year. Um, but that's not uh, six months, I'm assuming that's a year. Uh, subscription to join. Um, but if you call now, um, <laughs> this is a, I've got this email, this expires tomorrow. Because um, it was at the end of the month. So should you want to purchase your own subscription, um, if you add the coupon code NEW316, um, by the end of March, um, you'll get $10 off um, your subscription for that. They also send you a little bit. Okay. I read that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you can get the newsletter without subscribing. And the newsletter is full of good information. It's worth reading. And how you get that. I don't know. I don't know. I just clicked on the newsletter. <laughs> I'm sure if you go to their website, yeah. they would have like a subscribe to our newsletter. Kind it's of really button. good. It's once a week and it's, and, mm -hmm. and it's got a lot of stuff that we need. Right? Yeah. 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 So here's a little bit about, um, you know, this is the screenshot that I took from our computer up there. You're going to see, you know, that we were signed in, the Niagara <coughs> County Genealogical Society. Um, if you go down to the search, this is kind of the area that you'd want to play with um, with their databases. Um, they have 444 databases, so kind of like how we were talking about the 32,000 that Ancestry has. It's a little bit smaller. Um, and to kind of show you a little bit, I tried to just kind of blow up a little bit of the thing. You know, uh, some is New England, you've know, got Massachusetts, but then they also have some Barbados. You know, so there's, you know, some a little random, but there's Boston and, and other things like that um, of collections that they have in their 444. Um, when you come to here, this is just their database search. Um, we're going to watch a little video that will kind of show how this goes. Um, I did a search for Samuel Harding. Um, I got 6,326 results. Um, you know, and it'll, you know, I could narrow that down by clicking on things on the left. I just wanted to look at census records, things like that. When you start to look at the results you get back, you're going to notice these two type of icons. If it's a camera, that means they have an actual image to go with it that looks like a document. That just means it's something that's been transcribed. Um, they do have um, a YouTube channel as well. If um, you're doing dishes and you've watched all the hundreds of Ancestry ones, you can feel free to watch some American Ancestor um, videos and... I've got one that's just a couple minutes that shows a little bit about searching. Please. Ah. We got started. Thank you. AmericanAncestors.org offers hundreds of millions of index names and searchable records. To start finding your ancestors, go to Search Databases. The basic search screen allows you to search by first and last name, <coughs> years from and to, record type, such as birth, marriage, or death, location, and keywords. You can narrow your basic search by selecting the exact search checkbox <coughs> or broaden your results by checking sound decks. When you're first searching for an ancestor, we recommend you leave both unchecked. You can always fine-tune your search later. To narrow your search results even more, click on Advanced Search at the bottom of the screen. Here you can search by specific databases by selecting a category and database title, or you can search only those databases with images, free databases, or your favorites. In the Advanced Search pane, you can also add the first and last names of family members associated with the ancestor you're looking for. Not all databases contain family member information, so you need to be careful with filling in these fields. Always start wide, with fewer criteria and restrictions. Didn't we and say gradually that? <laughs> if you select a specific database to search, you'll have the option of entering a volume and page number. This is helpful when you know the page reference to an item and want to view it directly. After your search terms are entered, click on the yellow search button at the bottom of the page or hit enter on your keyboard. Here, I'm doing a search for Lorenzo Smith in the Massachusetts Vital Records to 1850 database. No other search terms have been entered. 
Search results <coughs> appear in three columns, showing the name of the individual and the category of the record, the specific event of the record with the record type, year, location, volume and page reference, and the text associated with the record, and the associated family member information, if any. Above the search results are links that allow you to set the number of search results displayed on each page, and a button to save the current search criteria to your My Account page. The controls on the left column allow you to refine the search by returning to the previously completed search form, conduct a new search with a blank search form, display only those search results. Okay, we get that. Get the gist. <coughs> One of the collections that they have um, listed in their 444 collections is the New England Historical and Genealogical Register. Um, this is uh, published quarterly, and um, it's considered their flagship journal of the, you know, the records that they have. Everything that they've found and uncovered is somewhere in, in this journal that they've published for years. Um, it holds over 2 million records. Um, they have volumes 1 through 168. We have this upstairs. We, su we subscribe. And so we've got these books here um, on the shelf. And above it, um, on you know, the index, so if you're searching for a person, you know, find their name, and it'll then reference, oh, you've got to look in volume 9 on page so-and-so. You don't have to do that anymore if you don't want. Okay? I know sometimes we like books. But now all of these have been digitized. <laughs> and, and you can search, you know, those are just the indexes for um, volumes 51 to 100 or something. You would have to look for the, you know, indexes for all of them. You can just do a single search. And, and, and every hit that had come in those books would come back in your results. Um, and when you do that, you can download the page as a PDF. You know, it's pretty easy. You just download the image, and it'll come up, you know, or it's a JPEG, I'm sorry. You know, save the file to your computer, and there it is, and you've got it. You know, so this is kind of where digital collections are, you know, kind of going, the convenience of it. You know, as long as the picture is of good quality, it's a bit similar to searching for the book. Oh, hey, that was it. <laughs> so I know I didn't go as in-depth, but I know that's a little bit of a narrower website depending on if you've got um, ancestors that are in that area. And I hope that if you do, come, come to our library during the library hours and, and check it out. You know, see, you know, try searching, you know, and, and see what comes up. Any questions on American ancestors? Yes? What about websites that you should avoid? I don't know. She's never met a website she didn't like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, the neat thing is, is that with the websites, as they're growing and growing, um, if you if you don't find something somewhere, when you come back in a couple months or a year, what you didn't find might be there the next time you come. So I don't generally chuck things away. I might set them aside, you know, and and you know I. Personally, I didn't find anything on Fold 3 the last time I checked. But the next time I come, they might have added some more collections, and there's my ancestor. You know, so it's, it's a little hit and miss, I guess. Yeah? On the uh, ancestry of DNA, mm -hmm. what does that cost, and what will that actually tell you? Okay. Um, it costs generally $99, um, and then you have to pay like a shipping, so it's like 109 or whatever. They go on sale sometimes, you know, it's $10 off for Father's Day. Um, just whatever you think you might be trying to buy, you know, the kit. Um, what happens is they mail it to you, and you spit into a little tube, and then send it off, and then it takes 6 to 10 weeks or so for them to process it. Um, with Ancestry, it's an autosomal DNA result. Um, and I think our, is it our next program? May 25th, we're having a special program on, on DNA. DNA. <laughs> um, Cause there's more than, there's different websites and different DNA tests you can have. Um, for, for me, the fun of it was just kind of 
showing where um, on the global map that said that my DNA, you know, where I inherited. Um, and then you can start to connect to other people and it'll give you a result saying, you know, we're fairly confident that this person's like a second to fourth cousin range from you. Do you know this person? And you can start to connect with them. And somebody that I had been working with our family trees just by connecting with our trees, our DNA did match. And we were like, this was the first time for us that, you know, we knew we were related because we figured out, hey, your great-great-grandpa was my great-great-grandpa's brother, you know, kind of, we worked like that. But sure enough, we were on the right track because we were cousins. And the DNA showed that to us. So just, there's a lot of, there's more coming too with all those new features that they're adding. So it's just, it's growing. And as more people take the tests, the more connection you make. Yes? Does the library upstairs have uh, Ancestry or uh, Find a Grave? Find a, find a Grave is free. free. You can Thank go you. to that anywhere that you are. Um, it depends. We don't subscribe to Ancestry, I don't think, right? Yeah, we, we had kicked that around a while, but we, there were so many local libraries that had it, we just felt that it, um, mm -hmm. and that looking at the number of visitors we have to our library, we just didn't feel it was a good, it's a good uh, use of our money. If you want to go to the Family History Center on Maple, um, they have a subscription. The historical the historian's office has a subscription. Lockport Public Library has the library edition. You can ask a buddy, <laughs> you know, like, um, go ahead, Barbara. And uh, I'm a, a volunteer librarian here, and I try to be here at least sometimes twice a month. And I have Ancestry, and I have it with me on my iPad. So, so I'm very, like, Barbara very could tight. let you play on her account is what she's saying, you know, to do some research. And I think some of the other librarians have it also. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? All right. Thank well, you. I think we have some refreshments here, so help yourself. Mm -hmm.